What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the channel. And in case you haven't heard recently, the United States government does not think that your Dodge Charger Daytona EV is loud enough. But all jokes aside, though, we do have a new safety recall out called 44C, or the NHTSA number 25V-389. And that's going to be addressing some of the noise that your Dodge Charger emits, uh, particularly the noise that it might not emit. So if you're not already aware of this, the federal government mandates that electric vehicles, PHEVs, and hybrids emit some type of noise for pedestrian safety. Now Dodge took one step further, added the Fratzonic exhaust. To me, that's way more fun than some of the noises that you get out of the other vehicles. Uh, you know, they kind of sound like you're about to get raptured by a biblically accurate angel. And you, know, you hear one of those things creeping up on you. It feels like your time's coming. But this one's pretty fun. Now, as fun as that Fratzonic exhaust can be, there is still a safety element. So we need to make sure that they are all working because we want our pedestrians to be able to hear our vehicles because we don't want anyone to get hurt. So 44C is a very simple recall. What we'll have you do as a customer is bring your vehicle in. We're gonna do a couple checks, make sure that it is emitting the sounds that it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, we have a software update that we can apply to it. Now, if you're cruising around in your car and you're saying, hey, you know, I get all the revs, I get all the acceleration noise, I don't need this recall. I'm gonna advise you to still come in you know, let us take a look at it for you. This needs to be documented not only for you, but for the federal government. They want to make sure that these have all been completed and that your vehicle is safe for all the other pedestrians on the road. So before I get rolling, showing you how to do this recall, I'm going to provide some technical information at the back of this video. You can pause and read the recall bulletin yourself. And I'm also going to put some links down below in my description so that way you can enter your VIN number and see if you have any open recalls. There'll be some resources from Dodge. You can also call your local dealership, give them your VIN number. They'll tell you if you have any open recalls and schedule for service. Now the inspection portion of the recall is very quick, very simple. So they have us come in and go to settings, down to electric drive, and you're going to see our Frad Sonic chamber exhaust. I'm currently in stealth mode. I'll place the vehicle in drive. And I can hear that uh, angelic hum coming from the speaker in the front of the grill. Next I'll switch over to drive theme. Boom, I can hear the uh, Frad Sonic exhaust kick on. We have revs. We do. So technically this vehicle would pass the inspection. Recall is done. So yeah, the, the inspection can be pretty quick, pretty easy. We're just verifying that your vehicle does emit sounds. Now there is one caveat to that. This is my personal vehicle. Uh, so it gets the scan tool hooked up pretty regularly so that way I can check for updates and I you know, find all different things. That's almost like a fast feedback car. I take lots of data, scan reports, and I send them to Chrysler. Uh, this vehicle itself has actually written quite a few TSBs for some of the issues that we've been seeing. Uh, so when I hooked my scan tool up this morning, I found that I do have a software update for the amplifier and it is covered with a blue lightning bolt and blue lightning bolts over top of flashes usually means an essential flash. Now my vehicle is emitting the noises that it's supposed to, so technically it does pass the recall, right? So I reached out to Stellantis and I put in a star case and I said, hey, you know, I followed the test, my vehicle is emitting sounds, but I do have a blue lightning bolt on the amplifier, what would you like me to do? And so they reached back out to me and advised me that I should go ahead and perform the update because I do have that essential flash. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that portion. Now, while the inspection is quick, this flash is not. So I want you guys to, to know that and be prepared. This is a two hour amplifier flash. It's kind of ridiculous that it's going to take two hours. And now that doesn't include you coming into the service lane, getting rode up, uh, you know, scheduling your rental, you know, waiting to be helped. Or if you're a technician, you know, like myself, I'm one of two EV technicians here at my dealership and we get pretty swamped, you know, especially with all the other things that we do. So we can't always get your vehicle right in and out. So be prepared for that. If you do need the software update, it will probably take quite a bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do my software update and I'm not using the screen recorder today. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'll film on the computer over here and show you because it's you know, like many of my other videos, it's just a software update and it gets kind of redundant just showing you guys clicking buttons and stuff. So I'll get rolling on that and I'll show you how that works. Now, in the event that your vehicle did not pass the checks, it was not emitting the sound that it was supposed to, or in my case, where I do have an available software update, even though my vehicle is emitting the sounds, um, we're going to perform that software update, which is pretty straightforward. Well, you know, I'll just hook up my DLC here. Ignition to run. And we'll load up Y-Tech. It's got my 50 amp charger, so we can supply some good voltage during the flash, because this is a long one. At about two hours, it will definitely drain the battery if we don't have some good voltage. And heading over to Y-Tech. And it's pretty simple. At this point, it's just going to be a long, long loading screen, so I'm not going to bore you guys with that. 
two, two hours later and the software update is done. Man, that sucked. That was the longest two hours of my life. And I've got the vehicle running now. I don't really hear anything different about how it sounds. Uh, the rev is the same, the idle is the same, the tune and stealth mode is still the same. So if you think this update's gonna give you a sound boost or a change in sound, unfortunately it's not. It was probably just some, uh, some hidden things that just need to be calibrated and changed to make sure that things were working correctly for safety. So the main takeaway from this is that this recall is very simple, very quick. Theoretically, we should have you in and out unless you do need that update. Now, again, please come get your recalls done. I know this may not seem very safety oriented to you, uh, but it's important to Stellantis and important to the government and the other people on the road around you that these things get taken care of. Uh, as part of vehicle ownership, it's making sure that the recalls are getting taken care of. We're willing to step out and fix them for you, but we really just need you to bring them into us so we can get that taken care of. And you know, if you're in the Hampton Roads area, whether it be all the way out in Williamsburg, all the way down to Suffolk, feel free to reach out to us, Hall Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your car for you. There's a lot of technicians that don't like the EVs, but I've kind of taken a different approach to it. You know, I've driven one every day and I've come to love these cars. They're not as bad as what people say. And they're actually quite easy to work on, uh, you know, aside from the software stuff that's out of my control. Physically, an extremely easy car to work on. And we'd be more than happy to take care of you. I'll do what I can to get you in and out. We'll get these speakers checked and get you back on the road. And don't forget too, that at the end of this video that I put the recall bulletin up for you to stop, pause and read it. That way you can get that information for yourself. And there's also gonna be the two links down below in the description. So that way you can enter your VIN number and see if you have any open recalls. Also, if you're having any issues with your vehicle, you can reach out to me at DaytonaOwners.com. Um, I'm in the forum as Mopar Tech Jordan and I'll do what I can to give you as much information as possible. Uh, shoot me a message. And if I don't know something, I can put you in contact with Dodge Cares, who will hopefully escalate your situation and get you taken care of. I'm also in a couple Facebook groups. I'm in the WAG S Facebook group and the Dodge Charger Daytona EV Owners group. Uh, you can find those two. I'm in there. Shoot me a message, you know, post something. I'll give you all the information that I have access to. But if you guys enjoy this video, just, you know, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. I love reading them. I've also got a bunch of other content coming for you too. We're getting ready to rock and roll in this car. I've got lots of little tips and tricks. They're gonna make your ownership experience a lot better. Thanks for watching, guys.